Right. <laughs> Hello, Clay's more school. Okay. So uh, thank you for attending today. So quick overview of who I am. So I am Millie Whitehead and with my lovely little team here, uh, run a gap year company called The Leap. And we're all kind of one of the kind of old and boldest kind of gap year companies that have been around for a very long time. So we like to, especially since COVID, where we did manage to get people away, uh, now refer to ourselves as gap year experts, which we're quite, we're, you know, yeah, we're pretty pleased with that. Anyway, how we can help you and how we are helping gappers um, over the last few years, well, since COVID, is that we offer a gap year consultancy. So it starts off talking to you at schools and you you join the leap kind of under a kind of leap VIP umbrella. And it costs like 150 quid each. You get time with me to script your itineraries, um, uh, our, our database of cool things to do in each country's itineraries, contacts, insurance, da, 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 da. Or you join one of our LEAP programs. Okay. So in essence, what those two opportunities that the LEAP provide helps A, the traveler who wants to go on a kind of team project, you know, which is organized and or and or the traveler who just wants to backpack. OK, who just wants to go traveling like Ed, but it's got no idea how to do it. OK, so that is how. So what is really important for you guys is to work out what type of traveler are you? Before you think about destinations, before you think about which part of the world you'll visualize yourselves in, just think, how do you want to travel? OK, because it takes a different type of character to just jump on a plane with a friend and go, Wee! we're going independently traveling. See your parents. We're off to Asia and literally with a flight drop into kind of Bangkok and think right now, now what, now what are we going to do? So, you know, it does take a bit of planning to make sure that you, what we call have a soft landing. So when you do land in Bangkok, you know who's going to pick you up from the airport. You know what your first three days or 10 days are going to look like, what you're going to do, how, you, how you're going to do it. That is the kind of independent role. It's challenging. It's, it's, it's fantastic for those that just want to, the challenge of moving every three days to a different place sticking to the backpacker routes, sticking, you know, to the well-trodden path. That's brilliant if that's what you want to do. I, you know, I can't, I can't fault it. The other type of traveler is the team traveler that wants to join a program like ours at The Leap. Oh, there's lots of others, you know, there's lots of others I can recommend. Oyster Worldwide, um, Gap Force, those are my uh, projects abroad. Those are my top three. Um, you know, competitors, but, you know, they, 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 you know, they do a really good job too, is that what that does is it, it helps you land in a country with a group of people. You might want to be traveling with a friend. You might just want to go on your own. You might have just had that friend that's suddenly broken their leg and now can't go. You know, there's so many things that happen in a gap year, which you can't predict, but should you just, that say, actually, I want to do something constructive. I want to, I want someone to show me the ropes. Yeah. To kind of make me travel savvy. That's why people join a leap program and or other, because you land with a group of friends. So your social life is taken care of. You've got fixed, not a fixed itinerary, but fixed objectives. So for example, if you were going to the Costa Rica adventure program, OK, You've, your first week is working in a community and doing loads of adventurous stuff, going way off grid, going right into the jungle, jumping off waterfalls, da, 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 da. The second week is working in a wildlife sanctuary. I mean, you just can't do that as a tourist or as a backpacker. Knock on the door and say, hello, can I work at a, you know, it has to be organized through the right channels. And also there are dodgy, you know, wildlife sanctuaries and there are good ones. So you've got to know which are the good ones. 
So you would do a week of community, a week of concert, a week of um, wildlife conservation, a week of turtle conservation and hanging out at the beach, and a week of adventure where you go flying through the cloud forest on a zip while bungee jumping, that type of stuff. So that is what a R four week pro or most of our programs are four or five weeks and they are scripted. So you've got lots of different challenges bolted together so that every day is different. Every week you're in a different place. So it's dynamic, it's speedy, it keeps you interested. You don't, you know, you're, you, you've got a plan. And by the time that plan is ended, then you're ready, definitely confident to then go, right, cool. Okay, I'm going to go now with my new friends or meeting up with other friends, traveling independently around the countries or add on countries. So what the big trend has been since COVID is to go to somewhere like Costa Rica or Colombia with the leap because they're beautifully positioned in Central America, Central, well, Colombia, the top of South America, beautifully positioned from there. People then change their flights, they don't come home, and they add on phases of independent travel. So then they go off and, you know, go up to... So if you're in Colombia, all the group that are in Colombia now are going down to Ecuador, Peru, down to Bolivia. And we guide through the VIP, give you the itineraries and contacts, and away you go. So we definitely help you... you know, the trend is to do a LEAP program plus the independent travel. That That is like the perfect world. So any questions so far on, on that? No? Good. I'll carry on then. So that's working out how you want to travel, whether you want to do it independently with a group or a combination of both. That is the first thing to work out. The second is then to work out which continent do you want to go? And, you know, this, you know, since since COVID, Africa, you know, if I was kind of looking on the kind of challenge ometer of which are tougher to travel around, I would say that Africa is the hardest. Then you've got Central South, then you've got South America, Central America, Asia. Now, Asia is the easiest out of the lot because it's so set up for backpackers, the buses, the little internal flights, easy to whiz around. But it's actually a pain to travel in because of the visas. Of course, that could drop at any time. But right now, oh, my God, lordy, lordy, you have to get visas to go anywhere. And it takes three weeks to get these visas. And da, 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 it's a complete pain. Whereas... In Africa, you have to get a visa, but it's very straightforward. But Central South America, breeze. Don't need to put visa. You literally land and go. They are kind of, they've made travel really, really easy. And also, if I was picking a continent to kind of which would be the most interesting, I would, I would look at Africa if you're never going to go on a kind of a family holiday, because, it, it, well, even if you are going to go on a family holiday, because Africa is so hard to experience if you're not on a luxury family holiday you know it's geared up for travelers it's not geared up for backpackers it's not geared geared up for doing projects but wow they really need help with the projects and it's so interesting to go off the backpacker trail the, well the luxury travel um trail and be invited into local homes and into their culture you know it's really really special but central and south america they are still the most popular and i really can see why i'm a big fan of central and south america i love all the countries there because they offer so much contrast you know you can go from colombia down to bolivia okay and in that journey You've seen the Amazon, you've seen the Pacific, you've seen the Caribbean, you've seen the Andes, you've seen Rainbow Mountain, you've seen Machu Picchu, you've seen the Galapagos. You know, that is just so much to see. And they are all contrasting experiences. So knitted together, it's just like, wow, you want to see my photos? Have a look. This is just like awesome. You know, whereas, yeah, I really, I like Asia. I, 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 I like Asia a lot, but it, it's, 
it just hasn't got so many kind of punchy contrasts, I don't think. Culturally, it has, but environmentally, you know, I don't know. Anyway, Australia and New Zealand, top tip for Australia. That is kind of number one this year. Everyone's heading to Australia and New Zealand. But I just want to warn you, it is so expensive. So really think hard if that is on your agenda, okay? Because you are, you know, you can live in Asia on 10 and in Central South America, uh, a hostel kind of $10 a night. In Australia, you're looking at 25 to $30 a night. You know, it's crippling. So people are kind of going there and thinking, oh my God, I've run out of money. Quick, quick, I've got to get home or get out of here and get to Asia. So be really mindful of that. And when it comes to budgets, you know, the greatest plan that you can do is leave school, have a fantastic summer and then travel, you know, not travel, great summer and then work hard literally every hour that god's given you between september and christmas literally go for it nail it every hour you want you want pub work whatever you can get you just do and i know around your neck of the woods i don't know you know whose borders and who's not but in your neck of the woods there's some great um hamper companies especially in salisbury and around there which uh always need help just putting it out there. So there's no, no saying, and pubs now, they can't get workers. So when people say I can't get a job, I know they're lying, they haven't tried hard enough. So anyway, you need you need to earn. And then you need to earn, yes, cost of programs cost more. Of course they cost more because you're doing more, but everything is kind of covered and it's you're paying for an experience. But when you're backpacking, you need to budget, I would say a thousand pounds a month. That's that's pretty average. You can you can get away with less, but that's what I would be uh, that's that's what I'd be aiming for. Yeah. So then you've got to work backwards and think, Christ, right? I've really got to work hard between Christmas and New Year. But every birthday you get given, every Christmas present. You know, start thinking about it in terms of a meal out. How many beers is that going to buy me? How many hostels, nights at night in the hostels is that going to get me? So start thinking like that and then you'll start squirreling it all away. Yeah. Okay. So that those are the basic principles, I think, at this stage for, you know, for you to start help you scripting your gap year and planning it yes make that decision to travel you've got to do it this is the only time in your life where somebody actually congratulates you for going traveling you know if you want to do it after university you're going to get a sad face from your family going really no we want you off our books this is not the time yo it's time you look you know earn your own pennies so this is the moment where everyone's like yay where are you going interested in your stories but work hard and uh, own it really own it so that you you feel really comfortable making the decisions how you're going to spend it whether you're going to go bungee jumping once twice or three times you know you it's your money to spend okay so right now just focus on yes i'm going to travel I'm not sure to which continent. Don't let that. Just focus on what type of traveler am I? Do I want to just backpack or do I want to do something a little bit more um, constructive, organized to help help me in to, you know, show me the ropes, find my way and then go independently traveling afterwards. So work out first what type of traveler you are and the rest will flow. Okay. How does that sound? Lots of lots of nods. Yeah. Good. Any questions? Ed, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was just wondering what kind of like time scale are you normally talking for like a backpacking? I mean, are they able to ask like a few months or a month? Good question. One month, one country. Okay. So there's no point. 
there's no point in racing around the world in 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 one month. When I hear people saying, "Oh, my itinerary is I'm going to go to Bangkok, Thailand, and Vietnam," well, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam all in a month, I'm like, "Oh, man, you're going to spend most of your time on a bus or in an airplane." Hideous. So slow it down. One month, one country. Right. Thank you. Yes, girls. What are you? What are you thinking? You're pondering. Um, we were just talking about um, we're we're doing. We want to do like sort of Southeast Asia route, mm -hmm. and we were thinking. It's interesting you said that because we're thinking like a month and a half or something. Just Thailand and Bali. We were thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe some other some other ones. But it's just interesting yeah. to hear that you wouldn't recommend trying to squeeze more into a month than one country well if you were doing one month i you could do two weeks in vietnam and two weeks in bali yeah that okay. would work because but yeah. then you're only doing the top half of vietnam yeah so you could fly into um hanoi at the top yeah wiggle your way down overland Halong Bay, you know, to Hoi An, which is midway yeah. down, and then mm -hmm. fly out of Da Nang down to Bali for two weeks. That that would work. Yeah. And and no, um, and you were saying about like the visas for South East Asia. If we were to like get your was it Leap VIP thing, would you offer support with that? Yes. That's exactly exactly what it does. It basically you you open up a directory that says, "What are the cool things to do in this country? What do I need to get into this country?" But the Foreign Office is also extremely good. The FCDO that is absolutely critical to have on your phone because the world has calmed down now, but it it can still change. So it's always good when you're traveling to have the Foreign Office um on on your telephone so you can double check is that an app did you say no it's just a no. it's just the foreign office f if you google fc f for freddy c for yeah. fcdo foreign office fcdo yeah um that and you go to each country just put in a country you go colombia and you know travel requirements yeah. then it all comes up okay and then um with like the month thing so with Thai so what would you say about Thailand and Bali if you're doing a month and a half or a month and a bit would you um I would then spend you know Thailand's a really weird country in that it's so long mm. so you've got you would want at least 10 days doing Bangkok and going north up to Chiang Mai mm. And then you'd need yeah. 10 days down south. You I mean, you can do all of this down south on the islands and then fly to Bali. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's 20 days. Okay. Um, thank you. Pleasure. Um, I was just going to ask. So when planning like a backpacking trip, so are you highlighting locations you want to stay or do you give advice um, on that kind of stuff? I give advice on, you know, the the things not to miss. Yeah. So, you know, if I was, if, if you were in, in Peru, for example, I would say, right, okay, you, if you're in Peru, you have got to do these things. And if you want to see Machu Picchu, this is the best way to see it. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and I would, you know, match your expectations. So, and guide, introduce you to a kind of really good guide that could help you do Machu Picchu. But in each country, through Leap VIP, I, 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 I'm not an expert. I don't have, um, not, I have a lot of knowledge of Central South America and Africa and Asia because it's only just opening up. We're, we're getting there with the complexities of traveling around there. Thank you. Um, and I was just wondering, um, how would you weigh up just purely traveling 
of the year. Or well, currently, I'm looking at doing some traveling and also working in a school in Malaysia. Um, so, do you reckon just pure travel, or is it good to get some work overseas as well? If you can get a gap a gappy job in one of those schools in Malaysia, yeah, KTJ, go for it. Yeah, great experience. Mix it up. A gap year is like eighteen months. You know. Yeah. Mix it up. You know, lots of people, you know, try and get jobs as gappies, you know, in Australia, in Africa, you know, that, you know, it's a really popular thing to do. And, you know, it's really fun because you've got st- structure, you, you're meeting really amazing people, you do weird and wonderful things at the weekends. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a to gain that balance of work and travel is, is good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What well, you want to fill a you want you want to look back on your gap year going that was really dynamic and full of really interesting things. What you yeah. don't want to do is work in a pub for eighteen months. That's just that's just tedious. You know, yes, you might be wealthy when you go to university, but it's like, come on, no, let's 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 mix it up a bit. Do 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 random things you know you could do ski seasons but actually they're pretty hard to do ski seasons right now the trend for doing a ski season is to go to canada you know that seems a lot easier to get visas and permits blah 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 but you know you, you can do that ve- you know put stick in variety into your into your kind of gap year wish list yeah thank you yeah Okay, so I think I think that's enough for you to think about. That okay, folks. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, it's death by, otherwise, it's death by detail. And you could, you you know, we could go into each country and describe the highlights, but you won't remember that. My overriding message right now is: think about how you want to travel. How you want to do it? Do you want to go with a friend? Do you want to go on your own? Do you want to go with a group? Do, 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 do. How do you want to? And be honest with yourself. How adventurous are you? How, you know, if you want to go on your own, are you going to get lonely in the hostels? You know, be honest with yourself, okay? And only to yourself. And that will help you work that out, okay? And then focus on which which continent, which which area you want to go to based on, what interests you? Stop by looking, you know, on the internet. Stop by looking on our website, thinking, just looking at photos. You know, just, you could follow us on Instagram and then you can get an idea of what each con- country is, the difference is in countries and continents. We're, what are we? On Instagram, at Gap Year Experts. That would be quite an interesting thing to do. Um but, you know, you could follow the Lonely Planet. That's another good Instagram account just to get a feel for, you know, is it the, do you like jungles? Do you like mountains? Do you like beaches? Everyone loves a beach. But what type of beach? Do you want the Caribbean beach? Or do you want big waves? Do you want to surf? You know, and then just that, once you start thinking like that, it will identify, narrow down, narrow down where, where you end up and what you end up doing. I think it's time for my next gap year. Yes, Gideon. I know yeah. you. Well, I did go to Peru just before Christmas. Loved it. Love uh, South America. I am a yeah. big South America fan. Love it, love it, love it. Me too. Yeah. My last big school trip was to Bolivia. Um, I think it's it may, might be the best place I've been. Very similar, I think, to Peru. Yeah, but I haven't been to the Salt Flats, so you know you're you know one ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you so much. Lots to think about. Um, we can pick some of this up. Hello, who's that? That Vivi. Um, look, look, things that we can pick up. Um, you know, another time. Um, Robert's on the Robert's the other Zoom le- Zoom user. Um, is, is there anything you wanted to ask, Bobby? Is there anything you wanted to ask? No, not really. Okay, all right. That's good, because we can't understand. No. Uh, Robert's in year 12, so he's got a little bit more time to think about it. I hope he's not thinking about a gap year just yet. 
Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. so listen, just think about it, get in contact, follow us on Gap Year Experts. Just, you know, it's an exciting period of your life. Okay. Make it just awesome. Don't waste a minute. But work hard between now and Christmas. Well, the, the summer and Christmas. Then you've got your parents on side. Let me tell you, if they're on side, life's a breeze. Okay, no? Thanks. Right. So, Gideon, I will upload this onto YouTube yep. and then I'll send you the link. Perfect. Okay. I won't be That's doing great. it now, but I will be doing it over the next few days. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks so much for doing it. Pleasure. Cheerio. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Cheerio. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.